Hey everyone, Ryan from E-Bike Escape. And JT from E-Bike Escape. And in this video, we're gonna be checking out the brand new Aventon Adventure 2. So let's, let's get, get into, into it. it. Before we get started with the walk around, if you are looking to purchase any Aventon electric bike, do us a favor and check out the link in the description. If you use that link before you make your purchase, it's a free and easy way to help support the channel and makes reviews like this one possible. Down in the description, we'll also have our electric bike accessories list, top e-bike brands page, and finally our electric bike discounts code page, where we track all the deals on the electric bike brands that we follow. With that, let's check out the Aventon Adventure 2. So as you can see, we are not in Wisconsin. We're in sunny California. Aventon sent us out here so we could do this review due to the inclement weather back home. And we're very excited to dig in yeah. to this electric bike. And if you aren't familiar with our reviews, first we'll start with a walk around, then we'll get into some first person riding footage, and then we'll jump to some third person riding footage where I'll give you my concluding thoughts on this electric bike. So the Adventure 2 is the latest iteration of the first generation adventure, which I have here launched in early 2021. It has been one of the top fat tire electric bikes, if not in the top three, definitely the top five fat tire electric bikes on the market. Aventon, when they launched this electric bike, really made a big splash with their nice clean look. And of course, they had some other cool features like the integrated lights. And what I really like is with the Adventure 2, there's some new features, but they have kept the price the same. It is priced at $19.99, which I think is the sweet spot for a more premium fat tire electric bike. With the refresh, we have new color options. In the high step, we have camouflage and slate, which you see here. And in the step through, we have midnight and cobalt. What I also really like about the Aventon electric bikes is most of their bikes are offered in different sizes. They have simplified it a little bit, the high step and step through version are available in regular and large. And another thing unique to Aventon is they have bike shops across the United States. So if you don't wanna order one and get shipped to your house, you can check one out in person. They have a nice dealer locator section. We'll link that in the description as well. With that, let's get into all of the specs of the brand new Adventure 2. And starting up here in the front, we have the Innova 26 by 4 inch. These are a change from the Kendas on the previous Adventure, but these are puncture resistant just like the Kendas were. And it has a very similar tread pattern as the Adventure to where you can definitely handle some off-roading with these. And then moving up from the tire, we have metal fenders just like the previous model. And then coming over, we have a Aventon branded Zoom fork. This is the same fork that is on the previous adventure but it is just event and branded this time and up here on the top we have a preload knob on the one side and then a lockout on the other and then i'm going to go ahead and push on this so you can see what to expect while riding here you can see it definitely has some push to it so it's definitely going to soak up some of those bumps while you're out on the road or off-roading as this bike is intended for as we go through the rest of the specs, you'll notice that there are a lot of similarities to the last model. There's a slight difference in the brakes, still 180 millimeter rotors, but now we have Tektro hydraulic disc brakes instead of Zoom hydraulic disc brakes. In my opinion, they perform very similarly. I would say up at the levers, the Tektro brakes feel a little bit better. And then jumping up here to the head tube, you can see we have the cable management that we have come to like on the Adventures. The wires run down here and go right into the down tube. And so you have a very clean look on the down tube. And then also while we're up here on the head tube, we want to point out the bolts here for the rack front rack option that is available. As you can see, it's mounted over here on the original Adventure. Moving on to the cockpit, very similar to the previous generation Aventure. We have the Aventon branded locking grips. Of course, we have the Tektro hydraulic disc brakes with motor cutoffs. Hitting the brakes will immediately cut power to the motor. We also have the Aventon thumb throttle on the left side. Before we get into the display, let's jump to the right side. We still have the Shimano eight speed trigger shifter, which I personally prefer compared to the thumb shifters, a slightly higher quality component. Now on a lot of the Aventon electric bikes, we have an integrated light that's mounted on the handlebars. It is a more focused beam, but I find that it is pretty bright. 
and we'll talk about the really cool lights integrated to the frame in a little bit, but let's get into the display. Now, Aventon has the same controls and display on the Adventure 2, but there are some slight differences to the controls. You'll notice on the left side here, we have a blinker. We'll show you how those look in the rear in just a second. Center power button, and then we have the pedal assist up and down button. Now, holding the plus button will turn on the lights, both front and rear. So this is the same event in color LCD display that they've been using for some time, now found on all of their models. In bright sunlight, it can sometimes be difficult to see, but what I do like is they give you a percentage for battery, miles per hour, front and center, and then you get additional information, odometer, total time, average speed, max speed, some CO2 reduced, some trees saved, and back to odometer. Now we have pedal assist in the bottom left-hand corner. You can see it is currently turned off and they've done away with the numbering. So now they have eco, tour, sport, and turbo for pedal assist levels. And one of the unique things about the event in display is you can pair it with your mobile device. Holding the plus and minus button at the same time will get you into some advanced settings. You're not going to want to change anything here except for perhaps the screen brightness, making sure that's turned all the way up. But we'll go into connect to app. So I'll show you how you can pair your Adventure 2 with your phone. Choose my display. And I'm going to scan the QR code. Now, once the bike is paired, you have access to a lot of the same information that's going to be displayed. You can also record a ride. There's also a social element, which is cool. You can connect with other riders. There's also some gamification where you can get medals depending on how many miles you've ridden on your electric bike. But one of the main things that people are going to want to use the display for is overriding the top speed. Now, the Adventure 2 comes shipped as a class two electric bike with the throttle or pedal assist but you can go into the advanced settings and turn the speed limit up. We'll be sure to feature the top speed on this electric bike in the upcoming first person riding footage. So as with all the event in electric bikes, we have some really nice welds up here. You can see they completely smooth them. That's something that we don't often see in more of the budget category of electric bikes. And of course, another neat thing is Aventin integrates their batteries into the frame on the down tube. It enters on the side, which I find is a little bit easier to remove compared to some of the batteries that come out from the bottom of the down tube. Now to remove the battery, you have a keyhole here and the battery pops off from the side. You do have a charger port at the bottom here. You can charge the battery both on and off the bike. The Event in Adventure 2 comes with the same battery that we saw on the previous generation, 48 volt, 15 amp hour battery. As with most electric bikes, we have metal pedals with reflectors. The kickstand located towards the rear of the bike and no chance of those pedals coming in contact with the kickstand. One thing that sets the Adventure 2 out from the Adventure 1, and we saw this change with the Aventin Level 2, is the Aventin Adventure 2 comes with a torque sensor. Stay tuned for our first person riding footage. We'll talk a little bit more about the differences Cadence sensors, of course, sense whether you're pedaling or not, whereas torque sensors lend itself to a more natural riding experience. You put more power into the pedals and the motor will give you more power. And moving back here to the rear of the bike, we have a matching Tektro hydraulic disc brakes like we have on the front with a matching 180 millimeter rear rotor. And while we're back here, here is a closer look at the rear motor cable, it has a quick disconnect right here. So if you ever had to pull the rear wheel, it is easily accessible. And the motor cable does exit between the rear dropout and rotor. And while we're back here, you can't move on from this section of the bike without talking about the integrated rear lights. And this is one of the changes from the Adventure to the Adventure 2, is there are now integrated rear taillights on both rear stays. And then one of the other changes, like Ryan hinted at before, is that the rear lights now have integrated rear blinkers. And the way those rear blinkers will operate is by the simple push of a button up here on the controls, turns them on, and then you do have to click them on and off. They are not on any kind of time. And the rear taillights here in the daylight are fairly visible. Of course, at night, they're gonna be a lot brighter and we are filming in some bright California sun. And then one other thing we noticed on this is that this is the new rear rack from Aventon and it is mounted now on the inside. So it really shouldn't obstruct the rear brake lights to really kind of amplify some of that safety aspect that the rear taillights will now add to the bike. And these are brake lights. So they do go brighter with the actual pull of a brake lever. 
And then this is the now included rear rack. And a couple quick highlights about this rear rack is it has a 55 pound rear weight capacity and pannier holders on the side. And one thing that Aventin told us is coming is some new accessories that fit this rear rack. So we're excited to check those out. Be sure to subscribe if you wanna see an accessory video on the new Aventure 2. Let's talk about this motor. It's the same tried and true motor that we saw in the previous generation, 750 watt nominal, 1,130 watt peak power. We'll test out this motor in the upcoming riding footage just to show you how capable it is. In the rear, we have 12 to 32 teeth. This is a Shimano cassette. And in the front, we have a dual-sided metal front chain ring, 48 tooth in the front. We'll talk a little bit more about the gearing when we get it up to the stated high speed of 28 miles per hour. For the derailleur, we have an eight-speed Shimano Altus rear derailleur. It's a component that we see on so many fat tire electric bikes. One thing we wanted to point out is that on the previous generation of Venton Adventure, they did have an Acera rear derailleur. But I imagine for a majority of riders, you're not really going to tell the difference between Altus and Acera, but it's something that we wanted to point out. On the chainstay here, this is an earlier model of the Event and Adventure. It will come with a chainstay protector, very similar to the previous generation Event and Adventure. As far as aesthetics go, they have Event and Adventure on the rear seat stays, and we also have Adventure on the top of the top tube on the high step version. I really like that they were able to fit in bottle cage bosses here. You could also put a folding lock if you'd prefer. And one thing to note as you're watching this video and especially the third person riding footage, this is the regular size frame. As I mentioned, it comes in two variations. One thing we didn't call out in the handlebars is these handlebars have a slight swoop to them and just a standard stem. If you wanted to ride in a more upright riding position, it would be very easy to put an adjustable stem up here. Talking about comfort, Aventon includes the same saddle that we saw on the previous generation. It's a very sleek looking saddle, though saddles are user preference. So if you find that you want an upgrade, be sure to check out our electric bike accessories list. We have some of the most popular saddles that we see people purchase for enhanced comfort. With that, let's get into some first person riding footage. I'll talk about the biggest change, which of course is that torque sensor, and we'll see what this motor can do. All right, let's get into some first person riding footage. I have the speedometer app by Cool Nix that will compare speed with the display. Just a note, in pedal assist zero or with pedal assist off, you do not have access to the throttle. I actually like that for a safety feature. And then if you go into even the lowest pedal assist level eco, you have full access to the throttle. Again, bike comes shipped as a class two electric bike, speeds up to 20 miles per hour while pedaling. Now the performance of this is going to be the same as the previous generation, at least with the throttle. And then I'll jump into the various pedal assist levels and talk a little bit more about the torque sensor as best as I can, because it does of course vary on the rider. We do have a slight downhill here, but we will do throttle alone. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, throttle only. And there's 20 miles per hour. Very easy, very powerful electric bike. One of the main selling points of this electric bike. Now I do get the question, can you pedal an electric bike with no power? And with some of these heavier fat tire e-bikes, of course you can. And the nice thing is you can really shift down on the adventure. You're just not going to travel at a very high speed. I usually tell people, seven, eight, nine miles per hour pedaling without the battery. Of course, these are electric bikes, so more often than not, you're going to be using the battery power. As I talked about earlier, this is a torque sensor. So let's first explain what a cadence sensor is. A cadence sensor, I kind of view as an on off switch. If you are pedaling, the motor is going to help you no matter what pedal assist level you're in, obviously more power with the higher pedal assist level but it's not going to change based off of how you're pedaling. And that's where you enter into torque sensors, which are measuring how much human power you are providing. Now, a lot of people who come from a cyclist background like this more natural riding experience because it's just like they're riding a normal bike. It's just electrified. It's just amplifying their power a little bit more depending on how much power they're putting in. 
Now, Cadence versus Torque Sensors, I don't think one is better. It's really personal preference, what you prefer the most. I will say Cadence Sensors for people who are perhaps hopping on an electric bike and haven't been on a bike for a long time, they might prefer the extra power you can get with very minimal output. But let's go through the various pedal assist levels on the Aventon Adventure 2. Now, what I'm going to try to do is start in the lowest pedal assist level, lowest gear, and then I'm going to talk through doing a very leisurely cadence, and then I'm really gonna put a little, lot more human power and we'll see what the speed is at the various assist modes. As I showed earlier, I went ahead and overrode this bike and we should get up to the 28 mile per hour mark. Okay, let's start off in pedal assist level one, eco mode. Now, I will say one thing I do enjoy is eco mode on this bike just gives you a little bit of boost, which is nice for accessibility. Now, I am in first gear, just very barely putting in any human power and we're going eight miles per hour. I would personally probably shift up, but if I put in more human effort, you can see we're getting up into the 13 miles per hour range, but then I'm starting to get a little bit more into that ghost pedaling where my legs are spinning faster than I'd prefer. I like to get a workout when I ride an electric bike. So I'm going to shift up into second, maybe even third gear here. Let's go into a tour mode. Again, nice and easy cadence, third gear, going about 11 miles per hour, so a little bit faster and then putting in a lot more power. We're getting up all the way 18 miles per hour, 19 miles per hour, and I would shift up into fourth, maybe even fifth gear here, and we're hitting the 20 mile per hour mark. Okay, let's see what we get in sport mode. I am in fifth gear. Again, nice leisurely cadence. Motor still helping me along course in a higher pedal assist level, going about 11, 12 miles per hour, 13. And if I put in more effort, and not significantly so, I'm not going to break a sweat, but we're getting up into the 20 miles per hour, 21, and I'd shift up here to sixth gear, maybe even seventh gear. We're hitting 22 miles per hour, 23 miles per hour, and I would say this is still a cadence I could do for a very long time going at that speed. Okay, next I want to go into turbo mode and I'm going to stay here in seventh gear. This is a slight uphill and I can feel the motor. It wants to help me more. Uh, going about 13, 14 miles per hour add a nice leisurely cadence. And then of course, even if I just put a slightly more effort in, that motor is going to help me 15, 16 miles per hour. And then of course, if I really put in more, we're gonna get into 23, 25, 26, 27. Display is reading 30 miles an hour. And again, this is a slight uphill. And there's your 28 miles per hour top speed on this bike, even up a slight incline. So that's how the bike performs on flat ground. But let's go find a hill here in San Diego and see what the Event and Adventure 2 can do. All right, let's get into the hill climb test on the Event and Adventure 2. Now, given we are not in Wisconsin, we can't take it up our regular hill climb test but this is the largest hill we could find while we are cruising around today. And so we'll see what this bike can do. I'm going up a, a slight incline and the bike's holding me at 19, 20 miles per hour. Keep in mind, this is a 750 watt nominal, 1,130 watt peak motor, and just a very capable fat tire electric bike. But it's nice to know if you need to, you can always just throttle your way going 18. And since this is the same motor as the previous generation, you can check out our other review if you want and watch the hill climb test and see how it does up the hill that we test out all the electric bikes that we review. There's 15 miles per hour, but still very impressive. And of course, you're only going to get better performance 
and conserve battery if you're also pedaling. All right, with that, let's get into the third person riding footage and I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the Aventin Adventure 2. The Aventin Adventure 2 is not a groundbreaking fat tire e-bike, at least when comparing it to the previous generation. Instead, it builds on what was already one of the most popular fat tire e-bikes on the market. When you consider the price of $18.99, which is $100 less than what the first gen Adventure sold for, at least for a majority of the time, it is deserving of its spot on our list of top fat tire e-bikes. So what's actually new here? The rear rack is a nice inclusion and looks more well thought out and higher quality than its predecessor. I'm curious to see some of the accessories that are coming from Aventin. Next, the built-in turn signals. Definitely one of the first few companies to do this, though I'm unsure if the average rider is actually going to utilize these. Cars in the US aren't expecting bikes to have turn signals and hand signals seem more visible, at least in the daylight. It might also just be something that's easy to forget about if you're actually riding in a city with lots of things going on. Let me know your thoughts about the turn signals in the comment section below. But the turn signals are just additional LEDs on the integrated rear lights in the seat stays, which I am a big fan of. And now they are on each side of the frame. It's a touch that gives a little more of a premium look to the bike while still being in what I consider a reasonable price range. I'll also give my typical props to Aventin for their smooth welds, which also helps the frame stand out from their competitors. The biggest change on the Adventure 2 is one that you can't even see, the torque sensor. So if you wanted a fat tire e-bike with a torque sensor, you're probably happy about this change. It's a more natural riding experience, but it isn't going to give you 28 miles per hour with little pedal effort. You're going to have to work for it. 20 miles per hour, which is still plenty of speed for most people, is still easy to achieve, even with a more relaxed cadence. I'm actually curious what everyone thinks. We saw Aventin move to a torque sensor on the Aventin Level 2, now the Adventure 2. Do you like this change or wish it was still a cadence sensor? And don't worry, the motor hasn't changed. It's the same 750 watt nominal, 1130 watt peak motor. So if you're curious how the Adventure 1 performed on our hill climb test in Wisconsin, check out the link in the top right hand corner of your screen. For components, they are largely the same. We now have Tektro hydraulic disc brakes instead of Zoom. Not a huge change as they both perform well. I maybe have a slight preference to the Tektro hydraulic brakes, but I wouldn't argue with anyone who said the opposite. Aventin did move to an Altus derailleur from an Acera derailleur. It's one step down on the Shimano hierarchy, and while it would be nearly impossible to tell a difference, I wanted to point it out for completeness of the review. Plus the Adventure 2 is actually cheaper, so I won't knock Aventin for this slight modification. It could just be a supply constraint from Shimano. The battery is the same 15 amp hour pack, which is just above the average battery capacity. And because it enters from the side instead of the bottom, it's easy to take out for charging. Aventin is good about giving real world range estimates and the Adventure 2 in pedal assist level one is good for up to 60 miles, which is partly helped by the fact that it's a torque sensor. Other considerations with Aventin is their dealership network, which yes, is good for shopping, but also for having someone that's willing to work on your e-bike should issues arise. As brands like Aventin continue to grow, this will be a huge differentiator and one that new e-bike shoppers should put a lot of emphasis on. And of course, sizing. You get the option of two different sizes for both the step through and the high step. My recommendation is always the step through. It's just easier, even if you are capable of swinging your leg over a high step frame. Looking back, it's worth noting how big of a splash the Adventure 1 made when it was originally launched in 2021. It was the e-bike that I and many e-bike shoppers compared other fat tire e-bikes to. Now here we are in 2023 and certainly the fat tire e-bike category is flooded with tons of models, but my recommendation hasn't changed. This is a solid fat tire e-bike from a company that continues to impress. If I've helped you make your decision on this e-bike or any others that we've featured on the channel, I'd appreciate it if you take a few seconds and use our affiliate link down in the description prior to making your purchase. It directly helps us continue to review e-bikes. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.